Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in for another flexibility float. This video focuses on flexibility for front splits, middle splits, as well as deepening your back bend practice. I have plenty of other videos that are more beginner friendly. If this video doesn't sound like it's for you, try those out. If you love splits and back bends, this flow is going to be perfect. As always, make sure you're listening to your body, taking any modifications or variations to suit your own needs. Every stretch or movement we do in this practice is available to take in a more shallow form to get all the same benefits. So let's go ahead and begin in a comfortable seated position. Feel free to take any little movements here to get you feeling good. Begin to tune into your body, tune into your breath. If you'd like to take a couple neck stretches here as I've been doing, go ahead and do so. Beginning to breathe a little deeper, filling your body with all that good oxygen as you sit up nice and tall, take a big roll in the shoulders. So we'll take the knees wide here, feet in, soles of the feet, pressing against one another, rock out a little left and right. And we'll begin to take some circles here, so warming up into the hips, just getting our whole body moving, warming up the spine. You can make these circles as big or as little as you'd like, totally up to you. And take your hands to your knees, really work into the shoulders here as much as you can, isolating the movement in the rib cage and the upper body as much as possible. And go ahead and find center. We'll begin to take circles in the other direction. Take your hands to your knees and really work into the shoulders, moving this way. Inhale, open up forward and use your elbows to press into the insides of your knees. As you exhale, round through your spine and inhale, lean forward. Hold here. Round back and lean forward, really pressing your elbows into the insides of your knees, opening your hips. Keep your right elbow where it is and take your left hand to the inside of your left knee. Dip into that right shoulder, really press strongly through the hand. Switch sides, drop your left elbow down, bring your right hand to the inside of your right knee. Open up the hip. And go ahead and release that. Take both hands to the insides of your knees and find some small pulses here. You can lean a little left and right. Find any wiggles, any little movements that feel good to you here. Remember to breathe deeply. Sit up, take a big roll in the shoulders. Pull your heels in as close as you can in towards your pelvis and take your hands behind you. Begin to press into the floor and lift your hips up off the ground. Go ahead and set down, let all the air go. We'll try again, inhale, lift up. 
hold here and set down. Option to either do that again or bring your hands in front of you and lift your hips up off the ground here. Find some balance if this does not feel good on the outside edges of your feet. Feel free to take any other variation you like. So go ahead and try one more time. I'm turning to the side so you can see what it looks like here. So you can either take your hands behind and lift up there or bring them forward. Allow your hips to open a little more. Maybe you find balance and bring your hands to heart center. And exhale, go ahead and release. Take some little circles, really working into the hips this time. And switch directions. And rock it out a little left and right. Walk your feet a little further in front of you. Bounce out your knees side to side. Take your hands behind you and press your chest forward for a little back bend here. Keep your left hand down and reach your right up towards the ceiling for a mini twist. And we'll switch sides. Keep your right hand down, reach your left up for a little twist to your right. And switch sides, left hand down, right hand up. Then take your right hand to the outside of your left knee for a twist. Release that twist and switch sides. Left hand reaches up and to the inside, excuse me, the outside of your right knee. Release that twist, reach both hands behind you, and find them in a clasp. Take a big shoulder rinse. Release that, intertwining the hands above your head as you round out forward. And as you round it here, begin to draw a figure eight with your intertwined fingers. Really releasing through the upper back. I'm turning to face you guys so you can see the motion I'm making here. Left and right. Left and right. Hold on over to your right. And take your right hand around your left wrist to get a little deeper here. Then go ahead and switch to your other side left hand around the right wrist, release to center, release the hands all the way up, take your hands behind you, roll out your neck a little if that feels good, and go ahead and return to center, sit up nice and tall, deep breath in, and scoot your hips back or walk your feet out forward so that if you were to come flat down, your chin would come right about to your toes. That's how you can line up and find a forward fold here. Walk your hands a little to the right. If you can bring your forearms down, awesome, do it. and move through center, hands on over to your left. Return to center, intertwine your fingers and take a very active forward fold here, a nice flat line in the spine before you inhale. Lift all the way up, take your hands behind you. So what we're doing here is keep the left foot where it was, take the right knee a little bit out to the side. So the sole's facing the front of the room or the side of your mat. And press open the right hip a little more. This stretch isn't too specific, we're just getting a little deeper into 
the muscles of the inner thigh on the right there. Now we're switching to the left. So take the left leg a little wider, really press into the inside of that knee. And return to center. Take both feet wide on the mat. So what we're doing is dropping your left knee in. So both knees are at 90. And shift your torso to face your right knee as much as you can. Begin to walk the hands down if that feels all right. You should feel a pretty in intense stretch along the outside of your right hip. We'll make our way through center, bring both knees parallel there, then drop the right knee in, shift your torso to square off with the left knee, and eventually find your edge on this side. Gently release this side and return to center. Bring both knees parallel again. And we're gonna rock right and left. And every time you rock to a side, squeeze your glute muscles a little to press your hips more forward. You might feel a stretch through your quad. And we'll take one more longer hold on over to the right. So if you can come a little deeper this time, awesome. Go ahead and return through center and switch on over to your left side. Take that longer hold here. One more full exhale, then bring yourself back up to the center. Rock out a couple times, left and right. Then bring your feet wide on your mat. Hold around the fronts of your knees. Inhale, open your chest, arch your back, and exhale, round your back. We'll begin to draw some big circles here. So press the ribcage a little to the left through center to the right and to the back. So think of those circles we would do as if we were in cat cow or sitting seated, we're doing them just in a different position here. Hold the back and switch directions.
hold at the back here inhale open the chest forward and exhale and instead of tall and we'll make our way onto all fours however is easiest for you to get there stack your shoulders over your hands and your hips over your knees go ahead and rock out left to right pressing into the outside of each hip press more deeply to your right hold there and press more deeply to the left and hold there And return to center. We'll take a couple of cat cows. So as you exhale, round through your back up towards the ceiling. Really pull your belly in and inhale. Send your gaze up. Pull your shoulder blades together. Round and arch. If it feels good here, we can always continue to do those or draw a big circles. So really work into your spine. Press your rib cage one direction, draw a big circle, maybe you work into your shoulders a little bit. This movement is totally up to you and your body, so do what feels good. And then switch directions if you're taking those circles. And find center. Stack your hips right over your knees and drop onto your forearm. So we'll continue to take cat cows, but on our forearm. So it brings the stretch a little more into our upper back. So round through the back and press the chest down. Take a couple more of those. Also option to take a puppy pose variation where you're bent at the elbows, tap your chin, your chest to the mat, and then tap your chin to your thumbs. So I'm dropping down and lifting up. Drop down, big stretch through the shoulders as well. Lift up, drop down, lift up. Feel free to take a couple more of those. Otherwise, hold in your puppy pose. If you like to extend the arms in front of you, you can do that. Really press into your upper back. Engage your core so you're protecting your low back here. And as you roll out of that position, roll forward, drop your hips down, come to Sphinx posture. Engage your shoulder blades, very active position here, pulling them towards one another. And as you hold that sphinx posture with the upper body, bend the left knee and bring it to a half frog. Straighten out your right arm so you can really press into the left knee. Release the right hand and walk both hands on over to the left. Go ahead and return to center. Send the left leg back. Pull the right knee up into the half frog on the right side. Straighten out the left arm so you can really press into the right knee. And walk both hands on over to the right, sink low. Return to that sphinx position, shoot the right leg back, 
and return to all fours shoulders right over the wrists and hips right over the knees we'll take some big shoulder rolls here so dipping through the shoulders keeping the back nice and flat as you move take two more here roll through a cat calf that feels good and we'll begin to work towards our front splits so lunge your left knee forward whenever you're ready here To begin to open up through that right hip flexor breathe deeply the left hand comes to the inside of the left knee and reach your right arm up also an option to bring the left elbow onto the inside of the left knee right hand to your hip to get even deeper you can bring your right hand to the back of your right thigh and open up Wherever you're at, square off towards the front of the room. And really press down into that hip flexor. Release a little and press back into it. Really breathe deeply here. Toe heel the left foot out a little more to the left so you can bring both hands into center as you pick up the back knee and find some little pulses here. For a funky stretch, you can drop down onto your elbows. Also an option to toe heel the left foot out a little more to the left so you can drop the knee down forward. Find a bit of a back bend here, press strongly through the hands. And return to center wherever you're at. Draw the front knee along the midline of the body and we'll begin to find a rocking motion forwards and backwards. In the forward part of the stretch, we work into the hip flexor and in the back, we're in the hamstring. So we haven't hit a lot of hamstrings yet. If you'd like to hold in that back posture and stretch a little longer, do so. So if you're working towards front splits, continue this rocking motion, but slowly keep inching your front foot out more forward. Continue to work out wherever you're working on screen. I'll be showing working towards front splits, but feel free to pause the video, work at your own pace, and no rush to land yourself in a full split today. If you'd like to work more deeply on front splits, I do have a full video focusing on just that and I show some variations using blocks that are very helpful as well. So wherever you're at, we'll go ahead and press through your hands so you can lift your front knee up, continue those rocking motions as you make your way out of your split. Eventually send the left knee back next to the right. And we'll take some little circles out in the hips. Moving one direction. And switch, go the other direction. And we'll go ahead and move through those same stretches on the right leg. So lunge the right foot forward. Go ahead and sink into that front hip flexor there. The right hand will come to the inside of the right ankle and reach the left arm high. Next step here is to take the right elbow to the inside of the right knee, reach up. Otherwise, take the top hand to the back of your back thigh and reach up and over, add in a little back bend.
Gently return to center and toe heel the right foot a little more out to the right as you sink down towards your elbows. Wherever you are, go ahead and lift the back knee. Find some little pulses, really work into the hip flexor on the left here. Now, if you're feeling a little more warm, to sink down onto your elbows or take that funky stretch where you toe heel the right foot a little more out to the right and drop onto the inside of the knee. You can do that and I'll show that variation again here. Breathing deeply wherever you're at. If you'd like to take that variation with me, I'm toe healing my right foot more out to the right, dropping to the inside of the knee and really press through my hands and find some arch in the back here. Try to return to center, toe heel that foot along the midline. Sink deeply into that hip here. We'll begin to take those rocking motions forwards and backwards. If you held the hamstring stretch a little longer on the left side, do so on this side. And as you continue to rock forwards and backwards, now is your time to work towards your front split with your right leg forward. As we move here, this is the perfect time to notice any imbalances on the body. Maybe you notice one side is more flexible than the other side and that's totally normal. So if your other side was more flexible than this side, which is my case here, I'm much tighter with my right foot forward, really work deeply in here. Breathe a little deeper, push yourself a little harder to get to that same place. So you'll notice one side of your body that might need more attention than the other. That's totally fine. It's great that you're noticing it. Wherever you're at, continue the forward back motions as you bring that front knee in closer to your body. Take the knees and close to one another and circle out the hips. Go ahead and switch directions. Bring the big toes in a touch. Take your knees wide and rock forwards and backwards through your child's pose. And as you come forward, really put a focus on arching through the back so we can get some of those back bends that we love in there. Really press into the upper back. Keep your core engaged as you move. A couple more. Eventually resting down in your child's pose, allow your hips to sink towards your heels. So, so far we've conquered our front splits. Now we'll work a little more deeply towards our middle splits. If you can walk your hands more towards your left and rest down here. We'll continue to incorporate back bends throughout the rest of this video, but it will be primarily focused on middle splits. Walk your hands to the right. So 
really the half version of middle splits is a frog split. And if you can get a good frog split, you're well on your way to middle splits. It should be right around the corner there. So we'll start to work on our frog. Lift up out of your child's pose and take your knees wide on your mat. And I'll show a couple different angles here. So knees want to stay 90 degrees. Keep your foot flex to protect your ankle and your knees here. And begin to press your hips closer and closer towards the mat. Keeping your upper body in that sphinx pose will help press your hips down a little closer towards your mat as well as give you a bit of a back bend here. I'm showing from the front, knees stay nice and at 90 degrees and sink your hips lower. You likely will not be flat to the floor at first, but that's what we're here to work on, right? So if you have a couple inches between you and the floor, this should be a pretty intense stretch, especially if you're lifting your chest and actively pressing your hips towards the floor. Really breathe deeply. I'll give you enough time here to allow your muscles to lengthen. You to really sink down into the stretch. If it feels good to find a couple back bends, you can press into your hands, really press your hips strongly back. Option to take a twist here. You can weave your left arm under your right and drop your left ear down to the mat. took that twist go ahead and take a twist to the other side drop your right ear down right arm goes under if at any point you need to release from the frog stretch and get back into it by all means do so listen to your body do what feels good here So I'm going to show another view from the side if you are someone who's a couple inches to the floor or maybe half an inch here and you just can't seem to get all the way flat, here's a technique you can use. So lift up onto your hands, really find a deep back bend here, that's one you can use or you can lean a little bit forward and then press a little bit back. So you can rock forward and rock back a little and find right where the tightest point of the stretch is and hold there. So for me to really feel a stretch here, I need to be up on my hands and pressing my hips back a little bit so that, so that the knees come a little less than 90. So how we release here, we'll lay down and scoot the knees behind us, grab hold of the tops of your feet behind your back. Just release out, take a moment here to come out of your frog. We'll take one back bend, press your feet into your hands, lift your chest up off your mat for bow pose. Hold there as long as you like. Maybe take a cobra and release yourself down to the mat. Press your hips up high. Tuck your toes. And come through down dog. Go ahead and step one foot forward and then turn yourself to the side so you land in a wide-legged forward fold. Once you're there, bring your hands to your hips and come up halfway and begin to bounce out right and left. So bending into the left knee, take two little pulses and then into the right, two little pulses. I show from this side, removing one side and the other side. The shifting sides 
Go ahead and find center. Drop your elbows and round up. Make a cat cow here. Flow with your body. Drop down. Make a wave through your spine just a couple times. Have some fun with it. Then go ahead and drop down. Release towards the floor. Option to take your hands around the backs of your ankles to deepen the stretch a little more. Also an option to walk your hands behind you in the stretch so palm face down fingertips away from you if you have your hands behind you keep your left hand behind and reach your right arm on over to your right ankle Come through center, switch sides. And come through center, go ahead and find some dynamic movement, some wiggles out left to right, anything that feels good. Walk your hands in front of you, find a bit of a child's pose here with the arms lift up on the heels, press the hips behind you as much as you can and exhale melt into the stretch here so we'll take the heels in the toes come out a little bit to drop below into a bit of a squat here elbows come to the insides of the knees as you sink low into your hips as you hold here feel free to take any little pulses or movements that feel good Eventually making your way into a wide-legged forward fold. Once again, walk your hands a little over towards your right. For a variation, you can open up through your left shoulder a couple times here. Feel free to watch first and try it on your own. Then walk your hands on over to your left. Maybe you open up through that inside shoulder. And find center. We'll draw a big circle on our hips, bending into the knees, moving clockwise here. And switch directions counterclockwise. Always moving both directions equally. Find your way back to center, deep breath in, and exhale. On your next inhale, toe heel, the feet back in towards one another for a standing forward fold with your feet together. Hold here, big stretch the hamstrings, find as flat of a back as possible. Bend deeply through your knees, eventually walking your hands forward, dropping to your knees. Keep your toes tucked at first as you press your hands into your hips. Press your hips forward. Left hand comes down to the left ankle for half camel. Right reaches over and switch sides. Right hand comes down, left arm reaches up and over. Always an option to keep the hand that's on the foot on the back of your hip there. So if camel's in your practice, find camel. Also an option to drop the tops of the feet onto the mat to get a little deeper. Really press your hips forward here. For a more advanced version, you can release the hands, bring the hands to heart center, and allow your head to drop back. So once you've made your way out of your camel and dropped your hips back towards your heels, Go ahead and take some hip isolation circles here. If you love these isolations, check out my isolation flow. It's definitely one of my favorites. And switch directions if you haven't already. And we'll make our way into a camel one more time. So lift up high on your knees, hands press into your back pockets here, press your hips forward, hands walk down to the heels. Continue to press. Gaze goes up towards the ceiling. Only if it feels all right can you drop your head back. 
For most people, I would not recommend this, so if it hurts you at all when you're coming back up, don't drop it back. Option, of course, to bring your hands to heart center. And take your time coming out of this. You can always pause these videos. Take those hip isolation circles left and right. And find your way through all fours. We'll make our way to seated. Legs go wide here. Go ahead and draw your left knee bent. Pivot your torso towards your right knee. Reach the arms up as you exhale, fold forward. Lift yourself up. We'll take a half happy baby with the right leg. So a hand comes to the inside of the foot. Hold there. And extend it long. Fold out over. Turn to center. Bring the right knee in. Pivot the torso towards the leg. Reach both arms up and over. As you lift up, left hand comes inside of the left foot. Find a half happy baby. And release the leg long, fold over. And we'll prepare ourselves to work into our middle splits here. So take a straddle first. And take note of where your knees are here. So when we're working straddle, the knees and the toes will point straight up towards the ceiling. You can always point your toes, just make sure your knees are up towards the ceiling. A lot of times they'll try and fall in towards the center. And that's okay, but only when you're working towards middle splits. So when we're working straddle, keep them up towards the ceiling. You can go ahead and find some wiggles left and right as you lower down. Really take your time working to the hips here, the rotators, turn to the side. You need to work yourself down closer and closer towards the mat, keeping those knees pointed up towards the ceiling. Don't let them fall in. And once you've found your deepest point here, round and arch. Round and arch. And when you arch, really, really press your hips back, really trying to arch into your lower and your upper back. Find some stillness and melt low. If it feels good here to take your hands out wide to either side, you can do that. But you'll notice in this position, my back rounds a little bit in my lower back. So if yours is doing that too, press into your hands in front of you so you can really press your hips back manually and press your belly down towards the ground. If it feels good to release a little and press back down, you can do that. I walk my hands down and up. You can do it a couple more times with me down and up. Down and up. One more time, down, and up, and as you sit up next time, you can walk your feet out a little bit wider if they're going wider, and we'll begin to work towards our middle splits, woo! So if middle splits sounds scary to you, don't be afraid here, I'm not forcing you to do it. So continue to work that straddle if that's feeling good or take your legs as wide as they can go and begin to come forward and what will probably happen is what's happening here to me. The hips are lifting up and it feels like you can't get anywhere here and if you force yourself to come over, hips will probably come way up in the air, which is a huge stretch by the way. So as you become more flexible, You'll be able to press your hips down and roll into your middle splits. And if you're interested in working on rolling into your middle splits, I have another video on that, which is more informational and you can watch and get some ideas for your own stretching. 
So check that out, definitely. But for now, work on pressing your belly down and rounding back. So if you aren't flat to the floor here and this is way too intense, hold with your hips hovering above. But if you are flat to the floor and you want that little extra edge, the arching and rounding is awesome. So here I'm facing you guys. Just continue to stretch your middle splits. Also using a wall is awesome and I should get a video up on that. So many things to talk about with middle splits here. I'm just showing you some different variations. If you feel all right in your middle splits enough to take a twist on over to one side, you can do that. The same as we did in the frog splits. And take the other side. Turn to center, find a big arch in your back. Walk your hands up closer to your hips. And the way we come out of our middle splits, because we're probably all stuck like this now, is we lean back and use your hands to manually pull one knee in and the other knee in. And take your time getting out of your middle splits. You can take some circles, anything that really feels good here. You take a little forward fold for a shallow hip opener. Anything really feels shallow after doing middles. Go ahead and find your way back to a comfortable seated position. Take some circles one way or the other. And we'll take a closing breath together here. So bring your attention back to your posture. Take note of how this practice went for you. As you exhale, let it all go. We'll take a deep breath in all together. Reach your hands up. Exhale into heart center. Two more. Inhale, reach up. Into heart center. Last one, deepest breath of the class. Sip in a little more air at the top there. And our heart center. Thank you all for flowing along with me. Make sure to let me know how this practice went for you in the comments. Namaste.